Good morning, students. Today we will discuss about the system called tetragonal crystal system. As the name indicates, the minerals in the system is characterized by fourfold symmetry. In this module, you will be taught about the symmetry elements and forms of normal class, hemimorphic, tripyramidal, sphenoidal, and trapezoidal classes of the tetragonal system. So, if you think about the crystallographic axis of the crystals that's formed in the tetragonal system, it is referred to three mutually perpendicular crystallographic axes. Basically, two horizontal crystallographic axes which are equal in length and are designated as A1 and A2 and those are interchangeable. But the vertical axis is also known as C axis which could be shorter or longer than the other two axes. The length of the C axis may vary with each tetragonal mineral. The length of the vertical axis expresses properly the axial ratio of the horizontal axis is to the vertical axis that is A is to C where the length of the horizontal axis is taken as a equivalent to the unit value. The axes are oriented in their opposites and are designated by plus and minus sign. So if I may show you the crystal model of a mineral, here I am showing a wooden model. In this case, this mineral species is characterized by a long vertical axis C and two equivalent horizontal axis. The axis parameters, if I may say that if one axis pointing towards the observer, one is parallel to the observer and one is the vertical axis. And the upper side of the vertical axis is named as plus C and the lower side of the vertical axis is named as minus C. The axis that pointing towards you is named as plus A1 and the axis is pointing towards me is termed as minus A1. The axis to the right of my side is termed as A2 and to the left is termed as minus A2. So that is how the axis is oriented in this crystal. Now, as I had discussed earlier, let's consider two different figures here. The difference between these two are the length of the C axis. The figure A, which represents the crystallographic axis for a mineral that crystallized under the tetragonal system named as Circon, which is characterized by a smaller C crystallographic axis. Whereas, the one that is shown in the right hand side, which is characterized by a long crystallographic axis and are represented by the mineral octahedrite. So, from this you may notice that both A1 and A2 are of same length and the C axis may be either shorter or longer. So, then you may say that A equal to B which are not equal to C. Whereas the angle between the different axes, like in this case the C axis and A2, this is 90 degree and the angle between A1 and C is also 90 degree. So, which is designated by the letter alpha, beta and gamma which are all equal to 90 degree. So, this is important in terms of tetragonal system. The tetragonal system is classified into different classes. The first one having superior symmetry is known as the normal class and the type mineral of the normal class is circon. The class is also variably called as ditetragonal, bipyramidal or holohedral class. That is because of the shape and properties of the forms of the mineral in the class. Now let's consider the symmetry elements of the normal class of tetragonal system. The minerals in this class of the system is characterized by one vertical axis of fourfold symmetry which is a tetragonal symmetry with respect to the C axis, four horizontal axis of twofold symmetry of which two horizontal axis coincide with the horizontal crystallographic axis one and two, other two axis that bisects the two crystallographic axis at an angle of 45 degree between them. So, so that is about the axis of symmetry. Now we have five planes of symmetry of which four 
vertical plane and one horizontal plane. All these vertical and horizontal planes are oriented perpendicular to their axis of symmetry. So of this, two of these planes that passes through the horizontal crystallographic axis are known as the axial plane. The other two which are at 45 degree angle between the axial planes are known as diagonal planes. The crystal also possesses center of symmetry. So now I may show you the symmetry elements in this crystal model. If you may take the first symmetry element that is the axis of symmetry, the mineral is characterized by one vertical axis of fourfold symmetry. So I may orient the crystal like this with the C axis being the longest one. Now I rotate the crystal into 360 degree. You see how many number of times the similar faces repeat. So you can see that here there is a writing. So I rotate it for 360 degree. So you can count this one over here, then two, then three, then four. Again, if you rotate here, you will reach to the former face. So which means that this crystal is characterized by one vertical axis of four-four symmetry. So which is the tetragonal symmetry with respect to the C axis. Now the crystal also possesses four horizontal axis of two-four symmetry. So I can hold the crystal like this or like this in the diagonal way or like this or like this from face to face. So if I may hold it diagonally with respect to the Avon crystallographic axis and I rotate the crystal 360 degree, you can see that similar faces repeat twice, one time and two. So similarly, if I hold the other horizontal crystallographic axis A2, then I may see that the similar faces repeat twice when I rotate it 360 degree. Similarly, if I hold it face to face, again you see that similar faces repeat twice. So this is a similar face and a, a face similar to that would be here. So 360 degree rotation yields two faces. So which is a two-fold symmetry or binary symmetry. Now let's consider the planes. So if you may cut this crystal into two equal half in a way that it forms a mirror image with respect to a plane, you can have one horizontal plane which passes through the horizontal crystallographic axis and you can have four vertical planes that passes through the vertical crystallographic axis C and one of the horizontal crystallographic axis. This if I may name it as A1 and this as A2, the plane like this will pass through C crystallographic axis and A1 crystallographic axis and plane like this passes through C crystallographic axis and again A2 crystallographic axis. So which means that you can have four vertical planes of symmetry and one horizontal plane of symmetry. And again you consider the point that from the center of the crystal model and if I travel same unit length to all the sides I may find similar faces. So if I go from here to here I find a similar face here. If I go from here to here I may find the similar face here. So you can say that the crystal also possesses a center of symmetry. So the basic symmetry element of the normal class of the tetragonal system is characterized by one vertical axis of four-fold symmetry, four horizontal axis of two-fold symmetry, four vertical plane, one horizontal plane and center of symmetry. In this diagram, it shows the symmetry elements. From this you can see that the vertical axis is an axis of four-fold symmetry that is shown here as a uh, rectangle. Here this is a symbol for a binary symmetry. So you have one, two, three and four axis of binary symmetry. It could be either diagonal to the square or rectangle or from face to face. Similarly this figure represents the planes of symmetry. So you have one horizontal plane which contains both the horizontal crystallographic axis and perpendicular to the C crystallographic axis and you have four vertical planes 1, 2, 3 and 4 which contains the vertical crystallographic axis C and one of the horizontal crystallographic axis so either A1 or A2 and the crystal also possesses center of symmetry as indicated by the presence of similar faces when you travel equal distance from the center of the crystal. Thank you.